hockey season is over. Baseball season is over. Basketball season is over. CFL season never started. We got NFL left. But other than that, we are now in some drought times for sports, which means pick up some sports movies. What are the best sports movies of all time? Stop doing that rabbit hole. Zamprin, there are I don't know, 27 million sports movies to choose from. So we're going to make it easy. Your best three. You only get three. The mm. best three sports movies of all time are? Wow, this is hard. So for me, uh, you know, I'm a sentimental baseball guy. So Field of Dreams is definitely in my top three. It might even be number one. In some years, it slips to two and maybe even three, maybe even out of the top three. But it's in my top three today because it's a great movie. Kevin Costner, you know, having a catch with his dad at the end. I hope I didn't spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen the movie. But, but, you know, fantastic, (laughs) fantastic story. Great acting. Uh, You know, Ray Liotta steals the show as Shoeless Joe. So a really good movie. Uh, Number two for me is another baseball film, and that's The Natural and Robert Redford, uh, as uh, Roy Hobbs, uh, you know, a, a phenomenal pitcher uh, growing up in, uh, you know, the, the, the wilderness of the American Midwest, uh, you know, disappears for a while for circumstances that I won't reveal because I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen that one. He's having uh, and a come, catch with his dad. He's having a catch with his dad at one time, yes. Um, and there's lightning and the whole bit. Uh, and comes back as an old baseball player out of nowhere. No one kind of knows who he is and where he came from and, and – and is one of the best players uh, to ever play the game during that season. So two baseball movies for you. And another one out of left field. And number three changes all the time. Sometimes it's Youngblood. Sometimes it's Young Hoosiers. Blood. Sometimes it's, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's Goon. But today, you know, I was, think- I was thinking about this today. And number three on my list today is Dodgeball. A really hearty, laugh out loud, great comedy Silly with Vince Vaughn and Jason Bateman really steals the show. Uh, ben Stiller, uh, fantastic movie. Okay, Rick, I, I'll jump <laughs> in here, but I, I love your first two choices. Yeah. But suggesting that Young Blood is one of the greatest. Young Blood is one of the worst sports movies. <laughs> I I love that movie. Love, skate. love, love that movie. The, the skating scenes are wretched. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think Bruce it, it tells the that. tale of a guy who cannot fight but can play the game a certain way and he develops into a complete hockey player and ends up winning it all yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, I don't even know, I, I don't even know where to go with you I young blood <laughs> one of the last movies I thought we would hear today maybe after you know <laughs> seven. But, uh, but yes, but but is there anybody around the around the, the screen here that is willing to admit that Field of Dreams doesn't get them as schmaltzy as it can be? Is there anybody that doesn't get every time? Oh, the first time it got me, uh, it, the, it less and less. I, I had a look at it the other night and I, I actually couldn't watch it after a while, except for Leota. I found it, and I think it might be too much Costner, too much baseball for Costner over the years. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's uh, I'll tell that you. Me the first time though. Ooh. Well, and they still have the place set up because it really yeah. has a a cornfield, a corn farm in Dyersville, Iowa, where mm-hmm. they made this, and then it still exists. They kept the field going, and people, I mean, tens of thousands of people go there every year just to do that to have a catch. And in fact, I believe was Major League Baseball not planning this year they were going to have a yep. or two outdoor games yep. at the field. Wasn't it the Brewers and the Cubs were going to play there? I think yeah, somebody like something that. like that. Yeah. yeah which would have been it's so cool. That they will come. Which would have been yeah, so cool. All right. All right. Well, we better move on this or we're, we're going to get a One of the outfielders had to run back for a fly ball and accidentally got into the corn. And then it'll be like, oh, geez, what happens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very much like uh, all these guys saying this brings me back to youth uh, of my youth in hockey when they never played an outdoor game in their life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, Steve, what's on your three list? All right, so mouth off now. I got to go. Um, oh, absolutely. This will show my age a little bit, but part of this is because uh, sports movies used to be so terrible, and they actually have been getting better and better over the years with better dramatic techniques. Uh, um, 
a better idea of what sports really brings us. And, and uh, these ones came uh, early um, and it is a baseball one. And I will say baseball, boxing and golf like they're, they're they are the best sports to write about by far the best literature in all of sport are about those three, three sports in general. And I'd say the movies uh, uh, often do that because there's so much natural tension involved and it's there maybe a little bit, but uh, slower than boxing too. I mean, um, so my number one is a movie that's quite old and it's got a young Robert De Niro in it. It's called Bang the Drum Slowly. About And De Niro plays a catcher who's dying. And it's just so, one of the first sports movies that went outside of the sports world. It was a long, long time ago and to, to, to something different. It, 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 you know, we were used to things like Pride of the Yankees and you know, all of those kinds of stories up to then. Uh, uh, number two, uh, is Raging Bull. Um, it was a stark black and white boxing film, and it and also it was De Niro. In, yeah. also De Niro, all, and it was in black and white because it w- because of the duality of so many things involved in there. The the sort of the, the you know the haves and the have nots, all, all all of that kind of stuff. I really had like all of us did trouble with number three. Um, if you go with the fan, I'm going to say you misunderstood the question and thought we. No, no, and 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 you know, I had, because of the effect at the time, I don't. You know, it's it's small C two. I, I I looked at Chariots of Fire, and uh, a League of Their Own, just because it it, and I had it number four, just because it put me somewhere that I didn't know had existed, uh-huh. and, and really did something. So, no, but but number three in the long run, I went to another boxing movie, and that's Million Dollar Baby because of the spectacular acting by uh, Hillary Swank and, and uh, um, who else was, who else was that? Who was, who was the manager? Oh uh, yeah. Clint Eastwood. And, 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 and I didn't realize this till I was flipping through something in pre- preparation here. It's the first time he ever cried on television or on in a movie. <laughs> That, I mean, you know what? It, it, you're right about the boxing. For whatever reason, boxing lends, yeah. it, and maybe not for whatever reason. Maybe it's very obvious because it's a very raw sport, and so to do it, you have to be right out there, and you're by yourself, and you've got a lot of broken people who are in the sport. Either they start that way or they end that way. It, it, horse racing would be the other one, Scott, like that. And there's been some good horse racing movies too. You know, like like uh, Mr. Ed. Yeah. Sea biscuit, sea biscuit, for well, instance. Biscuit. If you had young kids, that's right? what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just got re- finished writing about horses this week, so that was on my mind too. Uh, yeah, you know what? The uh, Raging Bull is one of those movies that that a lot of people. It becomes one of those. You either really love Raging Bull, yeah. or you really watch it. and You go, "What the heck did I just watch?" But it is absolutely. If you look at any list, every critic has it with the top especially given the times that was early 70s right and things were changing dramatically in cinema and society and a a number of other things it was kind of a landmark film as well well and it was de niro and pesci which you know of course you know they've done some it was all together yeah bubs what do you say well i I, i'm not going to be too original here but i think really quite honestly when you go back to the mid 70s rocky was a masterpiece yeah Original one, Rocky, is an yeah. absolute masterpiece. The actual uh, acting that I think really amp- amplified that whole great white hope versus the great black champion and really modeled the life of Muhammad Ali versus, I guess it would have been Chuck Wepner, who, mm-hmm. Joe Bugner, but Chuck Wepner actually, Wepner. as a the guy. The Bayon Bleeder. Yeah, the Bayon Bleeder, a guy that was just a, you know, a, a barroom brawler that got an opportunity as Muhammad Ali gave him an opportunity to fight for the championship. A guy that no one had ever heard of, but a guy that had a reputation as a big time puncher and what it took for this guy that really had nothing and had this opportunity to fight the champion. And I think really when you mix it in with the cinematography of the 70s, um, the music, obviously, uh, the, music. the soundtrack, yeah. probably the, the most recognized of all time. Uh, I think it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's something that I could put in as a CD or DVD or a VCR or whatever. And once it's on, I can't get away from it. Yeah. So number two would be Hoop Dreams. Hoop Dreams to me is a very interesting um, movie that really, I guess, borders on documentary documentary. That, that really kind of talks about inner city kids and their dreams to play in the NBA and how some of them 
have these great, wonderful stories. And we always hear about the great success stories. But within Hoop Dreams is also a failure of someone that was a highly rated kid that didn't make it and ended up as, I believe, a truck driver, right? So it, it, it just had those ups and downs. And I think another one for me that, I mean, number three, like Rick said, there kind of bounces back and forth with depending on what month it is. But I love We Are Marshall. And, and that's oh, an yeah. incredible story about a real, you know, can you imagine how, what a tragedy that was? I mean, if that were to happen today, we did see it, I believe, in Russia where a hockey team, basically a, a plane crashes and you lose three quarters of the team. The loss of, of, of most of the team, um, the entire program and rebuilding it back up to national strength. Uh, so those are, those are three that I always uh, find very interesting. I stayed away from documentaries, but I think that's just a great choice, Bob, in, in, in there. And, uh, you know, like um, it, documentaries have become so good in the last 30 years. Radby talks about it all the time at work because he's always watched some documentary. Well, part of it's because the film's been available, you know, which prior to say the mid nineties, when everybody became set, obsessed with having a camera, and I don't just mean on the phone, uh, early nineties. So we, we didn't have that. And, and I, I think it's, that, that, that's, that's just an excellent choice. There's some other uh, really good documentaries in there. I looked at too, including the one on Ali. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you're great, great choices. A few years ago, the guy who, and I wish I could remember his name, I just can't, but the guy who took over, uh, as head coach of Marshall after that, uh, came and spoke at the B'nai B'rith dinner here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I sat down in the Sheraton Hotel in the lobby with him to do a piece on him the, that day. And, you know, when he talked about the story, because he, of course, was involved beforehand. He, I mean, he knew all these guys. It was, it was just, it was gut-wrenching to listen to that story. And it is, you know, Matthew McConaughey was great in that. And, and uh, you know, like it was, it, was a, it was a really good movie. It's just the story, because it's based on a real story, is so unbelievably difficult. Yeah. It, it really is. And, and, and as for Rocky, you know, it's funny because you lose, Bubba, you're, I, I agree with you 100% on Rocky being a masterpiece, but you lose some of the sense of that when you get into like Rocky 3 and Rocky 4 and all that. It, <laughs> you go, really? It was, really. Rocky? But the first one was amazing. Yeah. When he runs up the, the the up the stairs, I mean it. It's just an iconic moment. There's another part in there too that I love uh, in Rocky where uh, you go, Adrian, and it's really reminiscent of Streetcar Named Desire. I don't know if you, uh, which is one of the great stage Stella! plays. Stella! It's very similar. <laughs> Has anybody been to the uh, to the uh, the stairs in Philadelphia or run the stairs at the art gallery? In the '93 World Series, we all went over. Yeah, I had a look. I drove by it because the traffic was so bad the day I was going through, there was nowhere to park. And it almost killed me not to stop and be able to run up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, it's like a magnet to the yeah. top. It's like magnetic North or magnetic Hill and wherever it is, Moncton <laughs> or whatever. You know, secretly in that movie, how good is Burgess Meredith? Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Spectacular. Like, he's yeah. just so good. Like the, the relationship that builds between, you know, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone in that movie. And it's just, it's so good. I mean, he just, I mean, whether it was to be, you know, Angelo Dundee or whoever, you know, the most popular manager, I guess, would it be in the mid seventies would be Angie Dundee, even though it was on a different side for the other guy. I, I just thought it was his, his, his portrayal of a manager and, you know, that sort of, you know, inner city boxing club, a guy that knew it all in the old days and was going to yep. teach him a lesson. Just mm -hmm. great stuff. And you know who doesn't get enough credit for that? Because again, like Sylvester Stallone, who mm -hmm. have all those schlocky movies, and it is Carl Weathers. Yeah. Who never seen oh. before, who was amazing back yeah. then. Because again, we got to know him as this action figure and a cartoon character. But back then, he was the big, bad, braggish, bragging whatever Muhammad Ali like champion who you could hate in that movie. His posture in the movie, the way he stood was an awful lot, like a lot of the shots you see of clay, mm -hmm. you know, yep. of, when he, when he was cash as clay, that kind of broad standing over. He was, uh, he was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what that made, what made that movie as well, what makes, I think sports movies great in general is it's more than just about sports. It's about mm -hmm. those relationships. It's about those, you know, against the odds kind of, uh, you know, details. It's about, you know, how all these characters are intertwining and the story that's told. So yeah, Rocky nails it on many points. 
Uh, we know, I know we haven't got to Scott yet, but that's you're hitting on a really good point here about these things, because one of the things that most of us like about sport, I like it as a writer because of this beginning, middle end within the game. So in movies, uh, a higher art than any of us do here, you can and writing like a like fiction writing, you can put that inside it as kind of a metaphor for all of the stuff that's going on outside of it. You have that storyline outside so often reflected or contrasted by the storyline inside. Well, I mean, look, I've said this a million times to a bunch of different people because, you know, when you talk about sports, whether it's writing or movies or whatever else, field of dreams and, and Rick mentioned field of dreams. I mean, it's a great example. It's not, it's a, yeah, it's in the context of baseball, but it's not a baseball movie. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the stage is baseball, sort of, and there is baseball involved, but you could never say that Field of Dreams is about baseball, really. I mean, and, and that's what most of these, you know, Raging Bull, yeah, it's boxing, but it's not really about boxing. It kind of is. That's how they tell the story. That's the, the yeah. mechanism by which they tell us, but it's not really a boxing story. But anyway, that's, that, that's the great ones. All right, um, two of you guys mentioned the... the like everyone else, the first two are easy. Number three, when you have to whittle it down, gets harder. I had Rocky on my list as a maybe, and I had Field of Dreams in there. Um, number three, I'll go backwards. Number three for me, Steve quickly mentioned it. I'll throw in Chariots of Fire. Love Chariots of Fire. It's a great movie, mm-hmm. and not just because of Vangelis's, uh <laughs> theme song that we don't hear enough of. No. Uh, number two, Caddyshack. Which, uh, you know, it's who, who said that no matter, Bubba, I think, said you put the movie in or you're flipping the channels and you see it and you're stuck. You, you can't turn the channel anymore. I, I hate to admit Happy Gilmore is kind of like that, too. But nonetheless, you, you're flipping <laughs> around and you now cannot leave the channel. But number yeah. one for me, and it's not even close, if there was only one sports movie you could ever watch ever would be Slapshot, which was just <laughs> the most ridiculous but brilliant and hilarious and you know, the, the Hanson brothers, like like we just talked about, they have become ridiculous now, I, I suppose, because they go around and do all their shows there. But the first time you saw the Hanson brothers on the screen was a moment of absolute inspiration and brilliance. It really yeah. was. And the fact that it so re- was so reflective of, of both the E and the early I uh, yeah. leagues. Uh, and you talk to anybody who, who played in those leagues at those times and that, you know, and... and the Leafs end up hiring a coach out of there for crying out loud and John Brophy, uh, you know, that, that it was, it, it definitely was great. That whole thing about sports comedy is a whole different thing. And I made a separate category when I was looking at it last night, because maybe I don't want to admit that I liked so many of them, but then I looked at them and said, Oh, you know, here they are all these jokes, joke movies. And, and uh, I never fully loved them all. I love Slapshot more looking back on it. For its lines like you feel shame that's one of my all-time favorite favorite lines uh but i really not, didn't like a lot of the time but when i look at it a lot of them are pretty darn good like blades of glory uh the figure skating one is is really funny and and i was per- fully prepared to be very upset about the the stereotyping given that i'm a figure skating guy and 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 uh i, I think there's a quite a few like that caddyshack and what were a couple of the other ones that i i made that dodgeball Bob, there, dodgeball, dodgeball yep. yeah Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. Nights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, One of the funny things about Slapshot, which I had not learned until much, much later, was that the the woman who was a woman who wrote it named Nancy Dowd, who had a brother, Ned Dowd, who was a professional hockey player. And Ned Dowd plays Ogie Oglethorpe in the movie. So the guy, Mm -hmm. this whole Mm -hmm. thing, he would come home and talk to his sister and tell her these unbelievable stories. And she's making notes and making notes. And then this movie pops out and, um, and Ogie Oglethorpe, of course, is based on a guy named Goldie Goldthorpe, who uh, man, I interviewed on my radio show one time. And if you thought that Ogie Oglethorpe was an unbe- a not plausible story, it, it, everything <laughs> Goldie Goldthorpe story was way more implausible, but true. It's, uh, it, it's yeah. interesting you bring up that movie, uh, Slapshot, because, and we just said it moments ago, that sometimes it's not really about the sport. And de- definitely Slapshot is a depiction of the minor leagues of the sport, very much like Bull Durham. Yep. It, it also yep. depicts the, the guy at the end of his career, the guy that's just hanging on, right, who had that previous glory that just 
you know, is just trying to suck it all up through being a I mean, And we see that right now. I know many, both of you guys have probably written about athletes that are right at the end that just, you know, when we, we've seen it, we, it's been documented. Guys that just can't give it up um, mm-hmm. because it's an addiction. It's what they do. And in some cases, it's the only thing they know what to do, how to do. Um, and they're afraid of getting to real life. Um, and I thought Slapshot and Bull Durham do a great job of, of depicting that for the sports fan. I, and here's the issue I think I had about it looking back, you know, at the time, is that it was used too often by certain things. And I'll, I'll even say people that really favored and really favored in their hearts the goonism in the game, really favored it as an integral part of the game. And it, it became a bit like a – like we know it was – it was semi-true, and but we also know it was mocking. And they romanticized it to a degree, for sure. And that can be, that I found at the time, you know, it kind of bothered me. And I was trying to probably be way too highbrow about it at, at the time, and I'll admit that, down, admit, that, admit that now, but that I felt that it could be used too often by, by uh, people who loved it and thought it was funny, but didn't see it for the full parody that it was. Keep in mind, it came out in 1977, which is not only the minor leagues were like that, but right on the heels of the Broad Street Bullies. Street so Bullies, even yeah. the broader public had seen this as hockey. This well, and now and now there now there's probably uh, at that time in 77 because of the WHA and all of the attendant minor league teams that they had. There's probably 40 more hockey teams, professional hockey teams, mm-hmm. than there had been 10 years earlier. Yeah. Yeah, both. both, Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say both Bull Durham and Slapshot, I think, do from a sports perspective, do a phenomenal job of, uh, you know, pulling you in as the athlete and and those guys who really want to play the game, but they really want to play it somewhere else and and at a higher level. And I think both those films do a great job of, you know, telling that side of the story. Yeah, you're right. The one minor league story that I wish had somehow made it into a movie. My favorite story of all time that never, and so maybe in the next minor league movie we'll have to do it, was recalled to me and just by our former colleague Gary McKay, who used to cover the Bulldogs when they were in the AHL. And I can't remember the player, Steve, you may remember, but a player was uh, on the bus, they were traveling somewhere and suddenly came out of the bathroom in a panic and went up to the, the team equipment manager or something and Asked him, how do you get a cell phone out of the toilet? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I remember Gary <laughs> telling that story. That was early in the cell phone day. Phone into yeah. the toilet and spent the rest of the trip trying to figure out how to fish it out. Well, the other guys are, get it out. are you ever going to use it again? You know, do you know what would make a good movie? And it's never really been done. And it's and and all the tapes probably there. And I've always said at least a documentary should be done. And that's in that Tiger Cat season when they played in Guelph. And 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 how absurd that was. And there's there was a guy on that team, Henry Burris. It's only happened once before in the NFL, and it wasn't anywhere near the same circumstances. They just flew away for games. They still practiced in the same spot that they ever did. Ticats didn't even have their practice spot, didn't even have a dressing room, didn't have any of that kind of stuff. And it was a smaller, I think it'd make a hell of a, a movie, hell of a story if you could find the right focus on it. Henry Burris, the only other time it happened was Chicago when Chicago did that, when the Bears did it. And Henry Burris was on both teams. Well, there's, didn't there's the next project guys, for CFL Films. Didn't one of you guys lose a laptop from that? No, but someone left his laptop on a field in a rainstorm one time. Yeah, and, and, and uh, <laughs> we did, uh, we did uh, short-circuit everything there with, uh, with the rain. And I, uh, I know exactly the night you're thinking about, Bubs, <laughs> when all the sparks came flying out. because yeah. We, yeah, it was just and Let's not forget that Ticats team went to the Grey Cup that year. That's uh, right. Phenomenal story. Yeah, I would. I would just do a documentary on that field goal attempt that went up and then dropped straight to hit the oh. and dropped straight down. But we're on to a whole other thing now. We we got to yeah. keep our focus on these sports movies. What is your favorite sports movie? I mean, as I said at the top, there's only millions to choose from. Some terrific that we couldn't mention. Some absolutely atrocious. Slapshot back to the minors may have been the worst movie ever made of any genre so you know whatever but let us know twitter handles are on the screen you can contact us we would comment down below subscribe down below we would love to hear from you get your ideas too maybe it's something we can watch there's no more sports other than nfl (laughs) and some ufc help us help us